Hey, Simon here, co-founder of NoLoco. Today, I'm going to talk through how to use data collections in NoLoco. With NoLoco, you can connect multiple different data sources to your app. For example, you can connect to external data sources like Airtable. And we'll be adding several more data sources over the coming months as well. Or you can create collections and store data right within NoLoco. This may be best for you if you've previously had data in spreadsheets that you want to import into NoLoco, or you don't have any data at all yet, and it'll all be generated through your app. So today I'm going to talk through an example of creating a simple CRM database using NoLoco collections, and then I'll show you how you can easily create views around these collections in your app. So under the hood, your app is built on top of a relational database. And this means that every collection you add in NoLoco actually creates a new table in the database and allows you to define relationships between the different collections. For example, we could say that users belong to a company. By default, each app in a logo comes with a user and company collection, and you can add any other collections you like that are relevant to your app. So for my simple CRM, I want my team to track opportunities, companies, and specific contacts as well. So we already have a companies table, so we can just use that. So I'm firstly going to create a new NoLoco collection, and this will be for the contacts table. So I'll choose new NoLoco collection here, and choose to create a contacts table. So these will be our team's contacts at the companies in our pipeline that we're looking to sell to. Now I want to decide what information I want to store related to a contact. To do this, I'm going to add fields to the collection. So you can think of these like columns on a spreadsheet. So I have one column for the contact that relates to that contact's first name. So I'm going to add that here, first name, and this will be a text field. I'm also going to add a column for their last name as well. This will also be a text field, of course. Then I'm also going to add a column for their email address and then their role as well. So the role of the contact at that company, whether they're the vice president of sales, head of people, etc. Finally, I'm going to add their company too. So this is a related record field. So I'm going to scroll down here and I can see the different relationships options there. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom until I see the company record or data type. Then I define the relationship. In other words, does a company only have one contact? Does a company have many contacts? Does a contact have many companies and vice versa? Here, I want to choose the second option. Say that a contact can only have one company, but a company can have many contacts. In other words, we may have several different contacts within our target company, but each contact only works at that company, i.e. they don't work at multiple different companies. So say that if a contact is a company, then a company has many contacts. I'm going to add that field, and then I'm going to click Save. Now, I'm going to add my first record to my new contact collection. Whereas fields are like columns on a spreadsheet, records are like rows on a spreadsheet. So as a collaborator in this project, I can edit and access collections and add records right from the data tab, or I could create a view and add records from the app UI, which I'll do later. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my first record here. All right, so I created my first record, John Smith, his email, his position as head of sales and his company, which is example company here. All right, so I've added my contacts collection. And the next one I want to add is my opportunities collection. So I'm going to add a new data source and create a new no logo collection here and call this the opportunity collection. So the first thing I want to do is create a relationship with the company table or collection that we already have. So I'm going to scroll down here and choose the company, um, the company table from the dropdown. And then I'm going to define the relationship. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple and say that an opportunity can only be associated with one company and a company can only be associated with one opportunity. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, if we were selling to particularly large organizations uh, that might have different opportunities associated with one organization, uh, we could do a one-to-many relationship instead. But for now, I'm just going to keep it one-to-one. -one. Next, I'm going to create a status column. So you probably want some way of grouping different opportunities by the stage they're at. So what I'm going to do is go down and choose a single option select. And then I'm going to define a couple of different options here. So first, I'm going to create a lead option, then an onboarding option, and also then there's a one 
and lost option as well. And you can create as many different fields options as you like here, um, depending on how many different stages you want in the workflow. But again, I'm just going to keep it relatively simple for now. Now I'm going to add a few more fields. So I might want to add a field to capture the expected value from the deal. So I'm just going to call this field value. And I'm going to say that this should be a number or integer field. So this could be a, a price value, for example. I might also want to capture when our last meeting was. So I'm just going to write down here, last meeting. When did I last talk to this particular lead? And that is a date field. So I've just added that there. Might also want to add a text field to capture notes around this lead. So if I met them and wanted to capture notes in the CRM, so this would of course just be a simple text field. And finally, I might want to add just a simple uh, field to say whether or not the contract has been signed. So I'm just gonna call this field signed and just say this is a Boolean field. In other words, a yes, no, or a true, false. So those are all the fields that we need for this particular use case. So I'm just gonna click save now. We also have other fields as well that we could add to our collections. For example, duration fields to track length of time and roll up fields as well to create a summary of related records. For example, on the companies table, we could have a field that counts the number of contacts associated with that company. So I'm just gonna create that here. So number contacts, and I'm gonna say that this is a roll up field and it chooses the number of contacts and groups them by ID. And we're just going to sum, or we're just gonna count the number of those contacts. So that is how you'd use a roll up field if you want to use one of those as well. All right, so heading back to opportunities. So I've created my collection and now I'm just going to add a few records or opportunities to the collection. All right, so I've created my collection and I've added a few records for different opportunities to my opportunity collection as well. Finally, I'm going to show you how you can easily create views around these collections in NoLoco. So I'm going to go back to the app and I'm going to turn on edit mode here. This will allow me to add different pages. So I'm going to add a page for each of our collections that we've added. So the contacts collection and the opportunities collection as well. So by default, we display these collections as tables within the UI. We can easily change them to be as shown as other layouts like cards or Kanban boards, for example. We can add filters, sort the data, and also filter in line as well. So if you wanted to filter by status, for example. And the next time I want to add a record to this collection, I can easily just do so from UI itself. So I now have a functional CRM that's ready for my team to use, all built on top of NoLoco collections.